we're Emily and Matt, and if you're new to our channel, we do a lot of camping throughout the U.S. and occasionally hop on a plane to explore new countries. We're so excited to be in Ireland, and in this video, we'll share the must-see sites here in Dublin. After Dublin, we're renting a car and hitting the road to the southwest of Ireland. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that adventure. We flew direct from Seattle to Dublin on a red eye, which made for a long travel day, but we didn't want to waste a moment. The Dublin airport is about 10 kilometers north of the city center and transportation to and from the airport is pretty easy. Although there isn't a train service to the airport, there are plenty of taxis and buses to get you where you need to go. We stayed at the Temple Bar Inn, which as the name suggests, is in the Temple Bar neighborhood. There are many hotels in this lively area, and if you plan to stay here, just know it can get a little loud at night. Definitely keep your windows closed. It's the uh, first night. We just got in today. We've been up over 24 hours, but we're going to try to make it happen. We just feel like we can't waste a moment right now. We are exhausted. We're trying to get like a fourth wind right now. We laid down for a moment, and uh, Im woke herself up with a... Um, and that woke me up, and now we're up, so we're gonna it go is have like some whiskey. It's 5:30. We can't go to bed right now. Uh, and sleep for, for 12 hours. Like, yeah. just no. Well, Hour yeah. 27. Let's do it. And we're here. Let's go. After a long day of travel, we set off to do some exploring and stopped for our first of many Guinnesses. Dublin is a very walkable city, and the River Liffey runs through the center of town with many connecting bridges. We made our way to Happeny Bridge, perhaps the most iconic bridge in Dublin. This pedestrian bridge was built in 1816 and is officially named the Liffey Bridge. Happeny, or half penny, refers to the toll amount that was originally charged to cross the bridge. We continued exploring and found Dublin Castle. We decided to come back another day to do a full tour, which we'll share later in the video. The Brazen Head, with the claim as Ireland's oldest pub, was recommended to us by a local, so of course we had to check it out. Watch out for low doorways. Well, that was a pretty neat bar. Oldest in uh, all of Ireland, like 1198, something like that. On to the next. On our list of food to try was, of course, a traditional Irish breakfast. Although I have to admit, I do prefer the blood sausage in Scotland.
The largest cathedral in Ireland, St. Patrick's Cathedral, with St. Patrick's Park right next to it, is worth a visit. There has probably been a church on this site since the 11th century, and the present cathedral dates from 1220 to 1259. Unfortunately, no original stained glass windows survive, the oldest date from the middle of the 19th century. Not far away in the heart of the city center is Christchurch Cathedral, another of Ireland's historic churches. While we didn't go inside, it's also worth a visit. If you're enjoying the video, please consider subscribing. We'd really appreciate it, and that way you won't miss any of our upcoming videos in this series. A trip to Dublin wouldn't be complete without visiting the Guinness Storehouse. The Guinness Storehouse experience is a self-guided tour and includes a tasting fresh from the source and a free pint at their gravity bar with amazing views of the city. Each floor throughout the tour features something new. You can also add on extras like learning to pour a perfect pint of Guinness or the Stouty experience. It starts with everything you'd want to know about how Guinness is made, then you move up to the tasting room. Here we go, freshest in town. Nutty. So the specific flavors we're looking for here are a very subtle sweetness on the tip. Then up again for the Stouty experience or learning to pour the perfect pint, we chose to include the Stouty, which is a Guinness with your picture on it. Definitely book your tickets online in advance and be prepared for crowds. Are you ready to drink your face off? <laughs> yep. Oh, I don't want to ruin it. Up another floor to explore Guinness advertising through the years, and then finally you end up at the Gravity Bar. And up we go again. It's kind of like a Willy Wonka chocolate factory type of vibe in here. <laughs> We got very lucky with the weather and were able to enjoy 360 degree views of Dublin from the Gravity Bar at the end of the tour. This might be the best view in the city. Well, it's been a fun day. First full day here in Dublin. We uh, just got done with the Guinness Storehouse tour. It's super fun. <laughs> it's, you know, like an hour and a half. You can kind of choose your own adventure in there. Uh, ended up at the Gravity Bar, which is basically the best view of Dublin. We got so lucky. It's just a sunny, beautiful day, so we could see everything. It was amazing. Yeah, we got really lucky yeah. with the weather so far, but man, there's a lot of people in there. Be prepared for crowds, and we're yeah. kind of here in the off-season, so. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, Guinness from the source. We're making our way to dinner, and uh, then we'll just see where the night takes us. We'll probably, probably end up at Temple Bar. We haven't been there yet. We've walked by it about 5,000 times, but <laughs> we must go in at some point.
finally go to Temple Bar? Yeah, let's do it. Let's see if we can get in. Oh my gosh. Probably gonna have to squeeze in a crack somewhere, but yeah. we've done it before. <laughs> Here we come. We finished the night with a stop at the famous Temple Bar. It's definitely a pretty crowded tourist trap, especially in the evenings with expensive drinks, but it's something you just have to experience when in Dublin. All of the pubs in this area have live music, so you really can't go wrong wherever you end up. They do all serve food. However, the restaurants are usually on the second floor, so go up if you're looking for a meal. A top tourist destination in the heart of Dublin is Trinity College, but more specifically, the Book of Kells and the old library or long room within the college. Entering the college is free, but we strongly recommend booking your tickets to see the Book of Kells in advance online. Tours run every 30 minutes. If you're interested in learning more about Trinity College, they do also offer guided campus tours. The Book of Kells is a masterpiece of medieval art. It's a superbly decorated, handwritten copy of the story of the life of Jesus Christ set out in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It was written in Latin on vellum, or calfskin, close to the year 800 AD. The book was sent to Dublin around 1653 from the monastery in Kells, County Meath. Before you actually see the book, there is an extensive exhibition where you learn about its history, symbolism, and artistry. Moving through the exhibition, you enter the room where the book is on display and cameras are not allowed. The book is open to a page in the Gospel of Luke. The page on display can be seen on the Trinity College website if you're curious. After leaving the Book of Kells, you enter the Long Room, which is the main chamber of the old library. At nearly 65 meters in length, it's normally filled with 200,000 of the library's oldest books and is one of the most impressive libraries in the world. It was constructed between 1712 and 1732, with the barrel vaulted ceiling and upper gallery bookcases added in 1801. While we were there in October of 2023, the old library redevelopment project was going on and almost all of the books had been removed for restoration. Books were left on a few bookcases and we can only imagine what the room would look like full of books. However, this was probably a once in a lifetime sight to see as well. A couple blocks away from Trinity College is the Molly Malone statue. Molly Malone was a semi-historical, semi-legendary figure who was commemorated in the song Cockles and Muscles, a Dublin anthem. So I think you're supposed to touch your boob or something like that for luck. You're okay with that? I'm okay with that. Okay. Last full day here in Dublin, we uh, went and saw the Book of Kells at Trinity College, had some breakfast, and now we're making our way back to the castle. <laughs> the tour we wanted yesterday wasn't being offered, so we're back. <laughs> yeah, the uh, guided tour, you get to see like three additional items, so we just decided that was better than the self-guided audio tour, so you actually can't book that online, the guided tour that is, so. Sounds like it's really busy today since they weren't uh, operating yesterday. So, uh, yeah, let's find this castle. All right, see you at the castle. So we have about an hour to kill until our tour in the castle. And we've been walking for forever and our dogs are barking. So we are at a pub and we're going to have a beer. <laughs> so, what a job. Dublin Castle was originally developed as a medieval fortress and constructed on elevated ground once occupied by an earlier Viking settlement. 
From 1204 until 1922, Dublin Castle was the seat of British rule in Ireland. During that time, it served principally as a residence for the British monarch's Irish representative, the Viceroy of Ireland, and as a ceremonial and administrative centre. Following a fire in 1684, which caused severe damage, the castle was transformed into a Georgian palace. The new building included a suite of grand reception rooms known as the State Apartments. In 1922, following Ireland's independence, Dublin Castle was handed over to Michael Collins and the new Irish government. Today, it still functions as a government complex. You can buy tickets for a self-guided visit to just the State Apartments or go with a guided tour, which includes the State Apartments, as well as the medieval section and the Chapel Royale, which is what we did. Video isn't allowed, so we're sharing some of our photos. Below the castle, excavations have uncovered parts of the medieval castle structure alongside the remains of some of Viking Dublin's original defenses, which take the form of a stone-covered embankment, a section of which has been preserved within the massive circular walls of the 13th century powder tower. You can see a section of the castle's medieval curtain wall with a postern gate and a set of steps that led down to the original moat. The river Pottle, which still flows under the castle grounds today, would have been diverted in order to create a moat that surrounded the castle. There has been a chapel at Dublin Castle since at least 1242. The present Gothic Revival Chapel was opened on Christmas Day, 1814. It became known as the Chapel Royale after King George IV attended service in 1821. The galleries and stained glass windows are ornated with coats of arms representing many of Ireland's viceroys. The palatial state apartments accommodated the viceroy and were the focus of great state occasions. Today, the apartments are the venue for Ireland's presidential inaugurations and prestigious functions. To end our final day in Dublin, we visited the church, which as the name implies, is a restaurant that was once a church. The atmosphere is great with live music and traditional Irish dancing. We recommend you stop for a drink, but you can probably pass on the food. We opted to go to a local pub for dinner. Good morning guys. We are gonna end this video here. We're out front of our hotel, bright and early, waiting for a taxi that's gonna go take us to the place where we can pick up our rental car. And the next leg of our trip is a road trip. Road trip. Yeah. Gonna drive uh, on the other, on the other side, side, of, the side road. of the road again. Here we go. <laughs> so I think I'm ready. Stay tuned for the next video and we'll take you to Cork. We hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not already. See you soon. Here we go. Gotta go.